So now I want to spend a little bit more time talking about how to predict the products of an alkene addition reaction. For that express purpose, I've uh, kind of given you guys the, the following table to summarize all those reactions. And the first column here, I've listed all the different sets of reagents. A lot of students just think, so how do I predict the products? And I just look at the reagents, try and figure out what's getting added. Well, the key is you've only got about 10 or 12 different sets of reagents that are possible. And you're going to need to memorize every single one of those sets. That way you know exactly what's getting added. And so like if you see HBr, you don't need to know that, oh, that adds H and a Br. So, and I've set this up, so that the regioselectivity, when it's Markovnikov addition, that the H here, which is on the left, adds to the less substitute side, and the bromine, which would be the X here, adds to the more substitute side. That's Markovnikov addition. So the one on the left on the less substituted, the one on the right on the more substituted, and if it goes anti-Markovnikov, that would be exactly reversed. So, and then over here, I've put the stereospecificity in the next column. So whether it has none, or whether it's syn or anti, and as we said earlier, if it's syn addition, you're adding two things from the same molecule at the same time, if it's anti-addition, uh, you're doing backside attack on a three-membered ring. And, and then finally, if there's no stereoselectivity, you'll find that when you're adding the two groups, they're both adding to sp2 hybridized carbons, which are the trigonal planar and flat, so you could add to either side for direct access. So then I'm finally going to go through the intermediate. And the reason I really wanted to put this intermediate here is I wanted you to see which three reactions involve a carbocation intermediate. And that's why those are the only three reactions where rearrangements are even possible. So if we're doing any one of those three reactions, we should draw the carbocation intermediate just to verify whether or not it's going to rearrange or not. For the rest of them, though, predicting the products would be pretty straightforward. So and then finally here, you see, uh, the question really becomes down to then, how many chiral centers did you form? If you form no chiral centers, every single last one of these reactions will form a single achiral product. If you form one chiral center, every single one of these reactions are going to form two products. One where the, you know, the chiral center ends up R and one where the chiral center ends up S. And then finally, if you form two chiral centers, that's where the stereospecificity here is going to matter. So with two chiral centers forming, if there is no stereospecificity, you will form all four possible stereoisomers. If it's just an anti-addition or a syn addition, though, you're only going to form just the two anti-products or just the two syn products, but not all four products possible. And then keep in mind, if you end up having the possibility due to symmetry of forming a meso compound, then instead of four products, two products, and two products respectively, reduce those numbers by one. It'd be three, one, and one instead. So let's go and apply these and see how this plays out. All right, so in this first example, I've given kind of the relevant area of the chart here. So we're adding HBr, and that's HX here, where X happens to be the bromine. So in this case, we see that we're going to add the H to the less substitute side and the X to the more substitute side, as it is a Markovnikov addition. So and if we look here, that's a five-membered ring. We'll add H to the less substitute side, and we don't have to draw that H in, but I am for clarity's sake. We'll add the bromine to the more substitute side. And then we have to ask ourselves, did either of these two new sp3 carbons end up as chiral centers? And in this case, neither one is a chiral center. So you're going to form a single achiral product. This would be sufficient for your answer. Let's do another example. So in this example, we're adding HBr in the presence of a peroxide ROOR, and we can see that in this reaction, we're going to add an H and a bromine here, but it's going to be anti-Markovnikov addition here. So what that means is we're going to add H to the more substitute side there, but we're going to add the bromine to the less substitute side. And in this case, if we take a look and we'll examine, we have formed two chiral centers. And when you form two chiral centers, that's when your stereospecificity matters. And in this case, we don't have any. So if you form two chiral centers and there's no stereospecificity, you can actually form all four possible stereoisomers. So first of all, this would not be a sufficient answer to this question. We'll just draw it as a tool to get on the way, but the actual four products we'll get you could draw the two syn addition products. So and the two syn addition products would be where the bromine and the hydrogen are on the same side. So I, I haven't drawn that hydrogen in, and I'm going to leave it off here, but it would also be on the dash. So that's one of the syn addition products. The other syn addition product would be the bromine here. So again, I know that the methyl here and the, uh, the bromine here are trans to each other. And like, Chad, you just told me it's syn addition. And again, I did tell you it's syn addition. And the key here is that, again, that hydrogen I'm not drawing in, which I'll draw in real quick in blue. But again, I wouldn't actually include that on my products on a test, so is on the wedge. And so the H and the BR, the two things that added are both wedges. Those are syn addition products. But we'll also get the anti-addition products here again with no stereospecificity. And so in this case, now the H that's not drawn in is on a wedge, the bromine's on a dash, that's anti-addition. And then finally, the exact opposite. 
And so really we're getting two different pairs of enantiomers here. So the two syn products and the two anti products, all four of those would be the correct answer to this question. All right, now we're going to really take a look at the three different hydration reactions and really see what's the same and what's different about these three. So we'll start with oxymercuration, demercuration, and oxymercuration, demercuration adds an H and an OH, Markovnikov, and rearrangements are not possible. So in this case, we're going to add the H to the less substituted side and the OH to the more substituted side. And those two new sp3 carbons, only one of them is a chiral center. So, and as a result, you can form both the R and the S versions of this. So properly, I probably should draw something to the effect of one where the OH is in one configuration and one where that hydroxyl group, that chiral center is in the opposite configuration. And those two would be my combined product, a pair of enantiomers. Now, if we do this with H2SO4 and water, i.e. H3O+, this is also more Karvinikov addition, but the big difference here is rearrangements are possible. And when rearrangements are possible, you should always draw that carbocation that it forms to see if rearrangements are going to occur. And so, in our case, the first thing that happens is we add the H to the less substituted side, leaving the more substituted, more stable carbocation. And in our case, this is a secondary carbocation. There's a tertiary carbon right next door, and this is for sure going to undergo a rearrangement. So in this case, we're going to do a hydride shift. And so as a result, our carbocation is going to end up in this position instead, and that's ultimately where water is going to come and attack. And so a couple steps down the road, it'll take a couple steps to get there, but that's where the OH is going to end up. And there's our product. So we've got a little bit extra to do here. We added the first H right here. That's a new chiral center. This is a new chiral center as well, because that's where we did a hydride shift. It used to be sp2 hybridized in the reactant. But also, we just added a new group here, OH to here. So, But it turns out none of these are chiral centers. They're all not chiral centers. So this one's got three identical H's. This carbon's got two identical H's. This carbon's got the two identical methyl groups. No chiral centers here. This is a sufficient drawing. This is the answer, one single achiral product uh, for acid-catalyzed hydration. So finally here, we're going to look at hydroboration oxidation. We're still adding an H and an OH, still hydration, but it's going to go anti-Markovnikov. And so in this case... We're going to add the OH on the less substituted side, the H on the more substituted side. And if we take a look at these two carbons, neither one of these two carbons is a chiral center. We're going to form a single achiral product here. So this is your big difference between the three different hydration reactions. So again, the hydroboration oxidation goes anti-Markovnikov, but the other two are both Markovnikov. But one goes through a carbocation and allows for rearrangements. That's your big difference. You should get really good at distinguishing between these three reactions. All right, Br2CCl4, that is an example of X2 with an inert solvent, our inert solvent being CCl4. And in this case, we're going to add bromine to both sides. And then we'll take a look and see if we form any chiral centers here. So we've got a methyl group here and a bromine here, and then a methyl group here and a bromine here. And if we examine those two new sp3 hybridized carbons, they are both chiral centers. So in forming two chiral centers, this is not going to be a sufficient drawing here. I'm going to need to show some stereochemistry. So in this case, we should look and see, oh, this is an anti-addition. So those two bromines got to add to opposite faces. One is a wedge, one is a dash. So in this case, I'm going to make this bromine the wedge, I'm sorry, the dash, which means the methyl group's a wedge. And then on the other one, we'll make the other bromine on the wedge, which would imply that the other methyl group is on the dash. And we could have done this either way, so we'll get this guy's enantiomer as well. So here the methyl group could be on the dash and the bromine on the wedge for the carbon on top, and then the exact opposite for the one on the bottom. And these are your two anti-addition products. This reaction is catalytic hydrogenation. It's going to add a hydrogen to both sides of the alkene here. So and if we do so, Now, technically, I don't have to draw those hydrogens in, so but I should recognize they're both added. And if I examine both of these carbons, we did form two chiral centers. Those are both chiral centers. And so this would not be a sufficient drawing here to get this answer correct. So we should also keep in mind that this is a syn addition. So rather than getting all four possible products, we should only get two, or as we'll see in a minute, only one in this example. So but if I put the two methyl groups both on wedged bonds, that implies that the two hydrogens that are not drawn in are both on dashed bonds. And immediately we should recognize that, oh, due to symmetry, this thing, even though it has a chiral centers, is a chiral. It's a meso compound. 
So, and it does not have an enantiomer. So rather than getting two products, we're just going to get a single meso compound. If you were to draw this compound over again, with the two methyl groups being in the dash positions, it would be the same thing, just rotated 180 degrees. So again, when you have a chance of forming a meso compound, reduce your expectations on your number of products by one. We only get one product here rather than two.